Hello everybody, Richard Michael Owen here, and today we're going to review the RM Sotheby's classic car auction held in Monterey. It's their premier auction, if not the best car auction in the world. So yeah, we're going to see some cool stuff. We're going to see the Talbot Lego that raced the 1939 Le Mans. We're going to see a car made all of silver, sterling silver, believe it or not, and also Carol Shelby's amazing Ferrari 410. Let's get into it. Let's begin with what has to be my favorite car of the auction. It's this Zagato bodied Maserati built on the A6 G54 chassis. Now, if you search up A6 G54, you'll come up with some of the very best Maseratis of all time, including this one in front of us right now. So this was delivered as a bare chassis to Zagato in November 8th of 1954. Then it was rumored to be delivered back to Maserati just two weeks later. So it's pretty hard to believe that all this incredible car we see in front of us, this beautiful grill, the bumpers, the interior, everything was built in just two weeks, but that's what the paperwork says. Now this car is pretty unique in the A6G54 line because it's the only Zagato Spider and it was followed by 20 Zagato competition Berlinettas or coupes. They're just some of the best sports racing cars of all time. At the rear here, you can definitely see it was channeling the 1953 Corvette underneath the tail light. And I really do enjoy this car. Some people have written about it saying that they don't like the proportions or it looked like it was hastily designed, but I'm a big fan. The aluminum rear bumper, everything about this. So the car was first shown at the 1955 Geneva Motor Show alongside a Maserati A6 GCS race car. Pretty amazing sight, really. Now, if you look closely, the grille was definitely more weighty. It was a different design. And this is exactly how Argentinian Juan Perón saw the car. He bought it off the stand and he requested Zagato to make alterations to it, including a more traditional front grille, a different bumper that wasn't so swept, side vents, a hood scoop, and this light blue paint with gray interior. Now, looking inside the interior, it's kind of odd. The speedometer's all the way over on the passenger side, but there's definitely channeling a 166 Barchetta, the way that the material wraps around the cockpit rail. Now, at the auction, this failed to meet the reserve, but fortunately, the car was sold after the auction. That happens with many of the cars at the auction, that they stay available for a certain amount of days after the auction's over, and within that window, sometimes the cars do sell, and that's what happened in this case. Next up, we have one of the most dramatic cars of all time, that being the 1937 Mercedes-Benz 540K Special Roadster. So these cars are pretty unique because they were all slightly different in detail, chrome accents, length, running boards, and whatnot. But this one is particularly desirable because RM Sotheby's say it's a long tail, high door, covered spare Special Roadster. And I think it was one of the top cars because it was delivered new to the king of Afghanistan in May of 1937. And he used this car in Afghanistan, believe it or not, right up until the war. And then it was shipped back to the Afghani embassy in France where the car was saved. Now, after that, the car went to England and then it was privately sold. Then I think it underwent a very minor restoration. We're talking outer paint, floor mats, that's about it. And what we see here is what was done in 1953. So this car has been very, very well preserved and stored since 1953. And it has to be one of the most original of the 26 cars, that's for sure. Now these cars were real supercars of their time, had a big 5.4 liter inline eight, which was good for about 180 horsepower. So because the car has such an amazing history, because it's so original, because it's a long tail high door covered spare car, it fetched $9.9 .9 million at this sale. And as we can see here, some of the grill is very original looking. You see the crazing, likely that's original. Same with the steering wheel. This is probably completely original. It's never been restored. And that's what I like to see cars that really show their age. So it'll be very interesting to see what the next caretaker does with this car. It was an expensive buy, but congrats. What an amazing piece. Next up, I want to single out a car known as the Star of India. 
it's this 1926 Daimler 45 horsepower, which really was the chassis of choice for limousines in England because this thing ran an inline six sleeve valve engine that had silent operation, no tap it noise and, and pop it noise from the valves. So on top of that chassis is a completely German silver bodywork made by Barker of London. Now Barker was one of the top coach builders in England. They specialized in limousines, but here we go. They're making a car in silver as a disappearing top cabriolet. And it's because of this specification, I was just drawn to this car. We can look at the details, all the supports for the headlights. Everything here done in silver is done like jewelry and it really is a sight to behold this is an imposing car it's quite tall you can see next to these gentlemen it's quite a large car now on the side of the door there is the crest for the maharaja of rewa mr gulab singh who first ordered this car and he probably had a bit of money behind him because this must have been the most expensive car sold in 1926 now he ordered this as a hunter's tour so on the side there's collapsible seats for people that maybe were working for him. And then inside all the seats fold as well for equipment. Has this absolutely massive radiator ornament. It's almost too large. And that, I think that's his, those are his initials in the radiator. And yeah, I just appreciate looking at all this silver, all this English craftsmanship. And now we're gonna get a look inside. The dashboard is overly adorned. I think on there is a spark plug tester and a gradient meter to measure the Daimler's angle on the terrain. You can see the seats. Oh, you just, they just went out of view there, but they have these, um, Armrests, which are movable, has a white steering wheel, beautiful woodwork inside, really nicely built inside and out. And that's why this car fetched 880,000 US dollars at the auction. Moving on to our first fantastic Ferrari. This is the 1953 375mm, which sold for a whopping $7.4 million. Now this came from the Oscar Davis collection. In fact, this whole room in that Maserati came from the Oscar Davis collection. And Arm Sotheby sold 20 absolutely world-class cars from Oscar Davis. I'm a big fan of his collection. So there it is, the 4.5 liter V12, Le Mans winning DNA, 340 horsepower at 7,000 RPM. Those big four choke Webers, really impressive sight and a really simple cockpit in behind there and a beautiful all aluminum enveloping bodywork to go around it. Uh, the perfect combination really. So what's the history on this one? Well, this was first sold to a Portuguese racing driver, Casimiro de Oliveira, and he raced it throughout Europe, but had a mishap on a Swedish airfield. And then the car had to be sent back to Ferrari. And that's when Scaglietti made this all new bodywork for it. That's more in keeping with the 1954 cars. I think it looks a lot better. It just is a single driver's door. It's the Svelte Speedster with that big 4.5 liter V12. I don't think it gets much better. When Oscar Davis first bought this car, he was on a mission to restore it back to its 1954 configuration. As we see it here, he sent it to Frank T's Custom Coach Repair in Elizabeth, New Jersey. And it looks utterly fantastic. I love seeing those big four exhaust pipes sticking out, the fairing behind the driver, the central fast fuel filler. This is really automotive racing perfection. Now, here we are in the main showroom of RM Sotheby's, showing cars like the pieces of art that they are. Everything about this room is spectacular. The lighting, the carpet, all these competition Ferraris, does it get any better? So yeah, we're gonna review this California Spider, Carroll Shelby's old 410 Sport, and that 275 GTBC in behind. So here we go, this is the main event. This was the highlight car of the auction, a 1955 Ferrari 410 Sport. Chassis number 0598CM, which sold for a record $22 million. Really incredible car, Scaglietti bodywork, a big 4.5 liter V12, we'll get into that. So this car was a works competition car, raced by Shudaria Ferrari, by Juan Manuel Fangio in the 1,000 kilometers of Buenos Aires. It did not finish there, and then 
Enzo Ferrari sold this car and its sister car over to the United States. I think he really wanted to make an impression in US racing. So this then went to the John Edgar racing team. There could be a whole book written on John, the John Edgar racing team. He was an amazing man. And he hired Carol, she Carol Shelby to race this car in 1956 and 57 to resounding success. We're talking eight wins, 10 podium finishes. Shelby became the 1956 US Sports Car Driver of the Year, and this became one of the most successful of all the even numbered sports racing Ferraris. Yeah, it goes without saying, this is one of the most important competition cars, Ferrari racing cars of all time. So here it is, the big 4.9 liter twin spark V12. This is different from the 375 we saw earlier. This uses a new casting developed for the 410 Super America. But what's different about it are those quadruple distributors and the coil system. And all of that with the 46 DCF3 carburetors produced nearly 400 horsepower. Now this car, remarkably, with its matching numbers engine, chassis and body, remarkable history, yeah, that's why it fetched a $22 million. So next to the 410 was this incredible 1966 for our 275 GTBC. That's for competition. And these were lightweight aluminum special race versions of the 275 built in very limited series. Only 12 of these were built. They had larger rear fenders. I don't know if you can tell for larger wheels in the back, an aluminum four floor pan, twin fiberglass fuel tanks, and a dry sump version of the V12 from the 250 LM called the Tippo 213. This car had outside oil filler caps, plexiglass windows, competition lace Berani wire wheels. This is the kind of car I just adore. Now, what we see here is the result of an exhaustive restoration by Mark Allen of Rare Drive. He does such incredible work. He is super detailed. I love all the Ferraris I see from Mark Allen, and that's why this car sold for $7.5 million. Last up in this incredible trio of Ferraris is this 1958 250 GT long wheelbase California Spider. Now this is the 14th of 50 long wheelbase California Spiders made in this specification, which was essentially an open top, drop dead gorgeous, convertible version of the 250 GT competition car. As we can see, this car, this car came with a hard top that was sitting on the floor. And the history is pretty neat. Its first owner was a publisher residing in Milan, Italy, and it was first registered on Italian plates in 1959. Now, RM reports that this car was originally delivered as an open headlight example. So at some point, headlight covers have been fitted, which is kind of the more desirable variant. So in this specification, as we see it here at RM Sotheby's, it sold for $5.9 million. Also in the same showroom was this unique one of prototype. This was produced in 1968 on the Ferrari 275 GTB4 platform. And this car really sat in between the Ferrari 275 GTB4 production and the Ferrari Daytona, which came out later in 1968. So yeah, this has a lot of really unusual design cues, like a more protruding front nose and the headlight treatment, which kind of reminds me of the Lamborghini Miura. But looking down the side, can definitely see where the Daytona got its lines from. Uh, the side of the car, the doors, the glass treatment, and actually the rear end as you go around was really showing the direction for the production Daytona, which would be released later in the year. So yeah, this car was first displayed at the 1970 New York Auto Show, which I find kind of unbelievable. So this car was made in 1968, but it really wasn't shown that much. Furthermore, if you go and look at the history of this car, it's chassis number 11001. There's nothing out there on it. It's never been seen, so it was an absolute pleasure to see it in Monterey. So with its correct matching numbers engine and presented in the original factory color combination and so showing lots of original details like that headlight cover this sold for 2.3 million us dollars the last ferrari i'm gonna look at in this amazing showroom is this 1954 375 america with a custom cabriolet body by vignale 
Now, Ferrari only made 12 375 Americas. They were the most exclusive, the most luxurious offerings from Ferrari because they had the big 4.5 liter Lampretti V12 up front. That's a detuned version of the motor that was in the 375 MM we saw earlier. So what can I say about this car? I just love the long hood, the side vent there with a the belt line that runs down the car, wrap around windscreen, hood scoop, enormous egg crate grill to cool that big V12 engine, has all the great hallmarks of great Ferrari design. Now this car was originally a black painted car with a tan interior. Right now it has a purple interior, interior which I really kind of enjoy, but of a, for a Ferrari this important, it probably should go back to its original configuration, which also had a tan soft top. So retaining its, all of its matching numbers, engine, gearbox, rear axle, bodywork, and accompanied by a rare factory hardtop. I'd love to see this car with its hardtop. This sold for an enormous price of $7.95 million. Now here we are outside, this is Portola Plaza, and yes, RM Sotheby's had all these cars available for sale in Monterey. Let's have a look at a few of them. And yeah, the first one being this amazing sports racer, it's a 1965 De Tommaso Sport 5000. Now this began as a project between Pete Brock, Shelby, and De Tommaso to produce the King Cobra. But when things went wrong, I think there was some disagreement between the manufacturer and design of the car. Shelby and Pete Brock um, abandoned the project and left De Tommaso with this amazing design. Now what De Tommaso had to work with was this chassis at the time. It was kind of a backbone chassis, similar to a Lotus Elan, but it had an amazingly large Ford 289 V8 in the back with the Coletti gearbox. So the plan was to work in conjunction with Ghia and make the Sport 5000 bodywork on top of that, then go to Le Mans and go to Sebring. Unfortunately, that never really happened, but the car did race once. It raced at the 1966 Mugello 500 kilometer race, but unfortunately it failed after just one lap, but each lap of Mugello was 66 kilometers. And after the race, the car was taken back to De Tommaso's workshop, stored, and never raced and never seen again. So what we're seeing here is a really, really original car, original fits and finishes, never been modified. Had this car been sold in period, it probably would have continued racing. It probably would have changed guises many times and who knows, maybe it wouldn't even be with us today had it not been stored all this time with De Tommaso. I think up until about 2003. Now at the auction, unfortunately this car failed to sell, but I think they were looking for about 900,000 US dollars. So here's a car I wasn't originally planning on featuring, but I just fell in love with the shapes and the design of it here in the morning Monterey light. So what are we looking at? This is a 1952 Alfa Romeo 6C2500, so six cylinder, 2.5 liter, with a touring super leggera body called the Villa de Est Cabriolet. I know that's a lot, but really what we're looking at here is touring super leggera's most exclusive top offering. You can definitely kind of see the Ferrari 166 in there and they really went all out on this four seater Cabriolet. It's on the long wheelbase chassis, which is pretty rare, but it still has the super sport specification engine. So some people call this a bit of an experimental prototype, but really it is just the best from Alfa Romeo and the best from Tour Touring Super Legera at the time. And here it is, Oscar Davis bought it or restored it back to its original specification with the gray over blue leather. Now, if we look at all the details here, the aluminum work and the badges, we can see what a high level this car was done to. Definitely a big four seater, lots of leather in there, uh, pretty simple gauges, but I love the painted dashboard and the way it's shaped. Um, yeah, this is a car that really has my heart. Now at the front here, this is what really is the Villa de Este look, a coupe that was similarly styled, won the Villa de Este concourse, and now as a consequence, all these cars with this design are called the Villa de Este. Looks like a very original grill there. I just love all the chrome and the in the fender treatment. There we go. You can see how original the grill is and you can definitely see the etching in there. So this looks like it was a very, very well 
uh, preserved car. Same with the steering wheel, it looks very original. Uh, the engraving in there is all really nice and it's in a good condition. So yeah, this is a remarkable car. It didn't, it doesn't, it, oh, you can see the soft top bows here too. They're all done in chrome, which I thought was nice and it was lined on the inside. So one very exclusive, very nice four seat Cabriolet by Turian, which sold for 456,000 in Monterey. Gonna finish up with a really amazing car, also from the Oscar Davis collection. This being the 1938 Talbot Lego T150 CSS Teardrop Coupe. Only 11 of these ultra dramatic teardrop coupes were made by Fagonier Falashi, but this one's unique because it was prepared for the 1939 24 Hours of Le Mans. Yes, it is the sole competition teardrop. That means when this car was delivered, it had additional driving lights, a 250 kilometer speedometer, a racing bucket seat on the driver's side, a long range fuel tank, an external fuel filler cap, and it's a uh, the only one that was raced in period. So I really hope that the next custodian of this car takes it back to its Le Mans racing configuration. At the race in 1939, it was driven by Philip Renier and Massa and Norbert Jean Mahe. They were ninth place, but eliminated from the race on the 88th lap, probably due to mechanical issues. As we can see inside here, it is so well done. Inside note, this car is just a work of art. And so it must have been quite the sight seen at Race at Le Mans. Lots of louvers. Um, yeah, really amazing Art Deco French coach work that sold for $7.265 million. All right, well that does it for my review of the Arm Sotheby's Monterey sale. Now this sale sold $239 million worth of classic cars. That's a world record for the highest grossing automotive auction ever. And if you're interested in any of the cars you saw in the background, you can go to armsotheby's.com. They have all the lots listed. You can see all the results for every car. Well, wasn't that incredible? I just fell in love with so many of those Ferraris in that grand room. And Oscar Davis, what an incredible collector he was. I'm now a huge fan of the cars he owned, the work he did, and I have a new appreciation for all those great Maseratis and the Talbot Lagos and the impressive, impressive stuff that was in his stable. All right, well that does it. My coverage of Arms of the Beast here in Monterey. Thanks for watching everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.